All right, we're not in the Musketeer today, but I did shrink it and bring it home with me. Today we'll be going over my C17 Globemaster project that I've been working on for about 11 months now. I have a feeling I'm gonna talk quite a bit, so I'm gonna divide this into two parts. Part one will be all about the fuselage and landing gear because I was pretty involved. Part two will go over the tail services, wings, power system, all the electronics. Just put some mold release on some of the molds so it smells like dead brain cells in here. I actually already recorded this video, but I'm re-recording the intro because my first intro was trash. So without further ado, let's get going. All right, so the whole airplane was designed on CAD in Fusion 360. Um, and after designing the whole basic shape of the airplane, that gives you a pretty good idea of what build techniques you want to use. Like in the past on certain builds, I've built like a structured rib, a rib structure out of foam board. And then she did that with more foam board. That's what I did on my Delta A220 up here. It turned out pretty good, but there are some downsides to that. And then on my MiG-15 project, uh, I'll put a picture of it up. That's a fully composite build. Um, so it's all fiberglass molded from 3D printed molds. Um, and there's benefits and drawbacks to each method. I kind of wanted to combine a bunch of different methods and new methods into this build to make it as good as it could possibly be. The main construction of it is this pink insulation foam. Um, stuff you get at Home Depot, it's like inch and a half. And now it's hot wire cut with a DIY hot wire bow that I built. Um, typically when people do hot wire cutting, they do vertical segments like this, but this is a, I mean, seven foot long airplane. I didn't want to put 50, 60 vertical things and cut 50 or 60 different pieces of foam and stack them together. So what I did is it, I mean, I can't show you now because the plane's kind of built, but I did, I made boxes of each main segment. I think there's five of them. And then I hot wire cut each one of those. And then after gluing them together, I sanded the curves into them to get it perfect. Um, so that saved a lot of time, saved a lot of foam. But the way I had to do that, I'll pop the nose off for you here, is there was a sidewalls, vertical top and bottom pieces, and then there's infills in the corners. That way you could hot wire cut the entire edge. I also hot wire cut the inside just because it looks nicer and saves some weight. Now all these clear sort of green looking things, that's actually molded fiberglass from 3D printed molds. So what I did, I took the the main design of the airframe in the CAD program, sort of laid an outside mold shape over it, and then cut um, cut the shape out into that mold section, and it gives you a it's called a negative mold. Um, that way, once you cast the fiberglass, you get the smooth surface on the outside. And I'll drop some pictures of the molds because I still have them, but they're not very pretty anymore. So the front nose section, these landing gear bays, the wing box, um, the engine nacelles, and the top of the vertical stab are all casted out of fiberglass. The pink insulation foam is covered in one ply of two ounce per square yard fiberglass cloth and just your typical casting resin. So on the nose here, once it was all molded, I cut out all the windows. It has a ton of filler on the nose here because I got the shape in Fusion 360 on the nose a little bit off and I needed to fix it because it was driving me nuts. So instead of printing a whole whole new mold and recasting it, I just added a little bit of filler. And this is actually gonna help in the future because it is gonna need a lot of nose weight because it's a stubby little airplane with a lot of weight at the back and not much at the front. All right, and then nose gear mount looks like a disaster right now because there's a lot of wires in there. A, the nose gear mount is hand cut out of, I believe it's eighth inch plywood. And if you notice on the C-17, the nose gear protrudes or is mounted super far forward. And the slope of the nose is very, is very steep right at the front. So if I had a normal 90 degree retract, it wouldn't retract enough and then it would the wheel would stick out um so what i had to do is i had to take one of the free wing f22 main gear retracts which is a 110 degree rotation and so modify it slightly so that i could 
um, add the nose gear steering. And that allowed me to um, get it to retract fully. And that's why this is angled right here, the nose gear mount where it mounts on here. That's why it's angled. Because when the retract is down and perpendicular to the ground, the or the strut rather, the retract is still 20 degrees angled up. Because then when it moves 110 degrees, it retracts fully into the nose. Okay, as far as nose gear doors, it's got all four of them. They're not perfect right now. I need to adjust them slightly. I'll drop some videos throughout of all this working. I just use these cheap Chinese nine gram plastic gear servos for the nose gear doors. Um, the only reason I do that is because there are so many servos that you need. Um, you need to save as much weight as you possibly can. The nose gear steering servo, that's a free wing nine gram metal gear. I love those servos because they don't buzz and they're cheap and super reliable. Free wing blue box. Um, that People have had problems with those and I know that and I don't want those problems on this airplane, but don't worry. The blue box is just for nose and landing gear door sequencing. It's not actually going to be controlled to any of the flight controls. The reason I had to do that is because none of the other sequencers I had allowed enough time for the slow 110 degree retract to retract all the way before the doors closed. And since that blue box is for the Freewing F-22, which used that 110 degree um, nose gear retract, that's the only uh, sequencer I could get that would work. So that's how I, what I had to do there. So once the basic shape of the fuselage was built out of the foam, I outlined where the fiberglass sections would break off. Um, and then I sanded an indent in the, that way once I glued this down, um, it would lie flush with the foam. And did that same thing down here for your landing gear base. I actually fiberglassed the foam before I glued these things on. I have a good reason for that. Because if when I fiberglassed it before, it went down into the indent. Now, this has a perfect, that way the other fiberglass parts had a perfect bonding place um, for the epoxy. Also, it would leave just a little bit um, right here that needed to be filled. Whereas if I glued these and then fiberglassed the foam, the fiberglass would overlap here. Then you get messy strands that you'd have to clean up. And then you'd sand it down by the time you got it all cleaned up you wouldn't have any fiberglass left here holding it on so now how i have it set up now you have the entire ply of fiberglass not um, compromised in any way by sanding or filler or whatever um, bonding the wing box and the important bits to the fuselage wing box as you can see that is one ply of six ounce fiberglass and one ply of two ounce fiberglass then on the Around where the spars join, um, I put um, one layer of that fiberglass mat. And that stuff, it's really good, makes things really strong, but it absolutely inhales the epoxy. Um, so I just put it in these areas that needed strength. Then in the corners, I added a layer of carbon fiber toe, 24K, just for a little added stiffness. Okay, for wing mounts... That is a, on the front, that is a 20, I believe, 20 millimeter outside diameter, or no, 20 mil inside diameter, 22 mil outside diameter carbon rod. In the rear, that's a 10, 12. All right, so for as far as the gear bags go and the gear doors, I wanted scale gear doors, and that means, well, if I wanted it perfectly scale, I would have six gear doors on each side. Um, because they have the bottom gear door, the side gear door, each small gear door, and then on the real one, there's even two smaller doors on here that come out. I wasn't going to go that crazy, but I did want these gear doors functional. Um, so this was a very involved process for the gear doors because 
the lower ones have to rotate about 150, 160 degrees and butt up perfectly against the fuselage in order for the gear to not, or for them to not drag on the ground. Whereas the outer ones only have to rotate about 90 degrees. So in order to get around that issue and only use one servo on the gear doors, it needs this funky triangle looking mechanism. I'll try and find a better picture of it. But basically this top part of the triangle you see is connected to the outer gear door and that left part, it's hard to see that left part, it's caught connected to the bottom gear door, which is hinged there. All the gear doors are hinged with those little CA hinges. And it's, they're super convenient um, because they're bulletproof and it's basically just like gluing a piece of paper over the hinge and then cracking it free with the CA. The only downside with those is there is a little bit of resistance um, because of that and because the lower gear door down here has to move so much it was putting a lot of strain on the servo so what i did is i put some light magnets underneath so once it opens all the way um, the magnets hold the gear doors open and take all the strain off the servo and now that does add a little strain to the servo when it goes to close the gear doors but that's better than having strain the entire time they're open rather than just half a second when it's popping the magnets to close them. Mounting for the wings so they don't slide off. We'll get into that a little more when I talk about the wings, but it's basically just eighth inch ply that slots into the wing there's another ply sheet on the wing once it slides in two screws keep it from sliding out the gear strut on here it's hard to see i'll drop some pictures it's a custom strut i had to build using um basically just aluminum rods that you get at home depot and then some springs and a lot of tapping and drilling and cutting but was worth it because it's a very stubby gear and you couldn't get a strut for it anywhere. Speaking of gear, that's gonna be the most involved or sort of intricate thing I've ever designed. Now, it took a lot of iterations and sort of thinking and messing around to get this to work. Because if you know the C-17, it's got crazy complex main landing gear they go straight up and rotate. And there's two sets of gear on each side and they rotate in opposite directions. And now that, you can't just do a swinging gear because there's not enough room because it's so stubby on the inside and the gear would just run into each other and cause problems and it would look terrible and not scale, which would drive me berserk. So I had to do a lot of thinking and prototyping to get this. But this is what I've managed to come up with. So basically you have your main tower here. You have your upper A-arm, lower A-arm. These lower ones are separate, but the upper one is together and is connected to the retract up here. Now, they're not super pretty right now because they are 3D printed and reinforced with carbon toe and then just painted over. But that's the only way I could reasonably manufacture them and make them strong enough um then they have these little forks down here these whole things pivot actually and the all of it is driven by one retract the way i managed to do that and get them to lift and rotate is using some clever geometry here and some ball links so as you see this hinge for this push rod right here is offset from where the rest of the gear hinges, which means as this rotates and comes closer, this will only become like straighter and be further out. You ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you? Then this, as this comes closer, and because it's gonna the geometry is offset, you can attach that push rod to a little pivot arm here. If you do enough calculations and messing around, you get the lengths of the pivot arms right. Um, 
and the rotation points and you can get it to rotate exactly how much you want so as this swings up this pivot arm comes out what you want you you could do so pushes this little arm and rotates this whole assembly but that is the gear in the down position. And this is the gear in the stowed position. See how this arm in the middle here rotates upward, but this one doesn't rotate that much and pushes out. That's how you're able to rotate the gear on that little pivot arm and get it to, to twist when it retracts. Now, suspension. This is a sm fairly small, well, it's not a small model, but the gear components are small. And using 3D printing manufacturing, I couldn't make a suspension down here that would be strong enough and work well enough. So what I did, instead of making the retract point fixed, the retract mount itself pivots. Oh, and by the way, these all pivot on five mil carbon rods. Oh, yeah, all the carbon rods go through all 3D printed parts, and then there's just a screw going in one end of each one so I could take this I could take this whole gear apart and rebuild it if I needed to replace any parts but for suspension see this pivot right here is in line with the rotation point of the retract that way it can retract up all the way these arms can get once it stows up here there's that arm gets it all out of the way but notice the way it goes the retracts retract they retract straight up which is suspension so i thought maybe i could take advantage of that and instead of making the retract mount fixed make it um on a hinge itself and then just attach a spring to the top and that's what i did and there you go i mean it's stiff but it needs to be and the entire the entire gear acts as a reach out or acts as a suspension instead of having some super complex mechanism down here for that. And now you're thinking, well, if this rotates when it well, if the gear rotate when it goes up, then why doesn't it rotate when you have suspension? Well, because of the way the geometry is, the gear don't start rotating until it's about halfway into the cycle. And you don't get no anywhere near that when you're just doing a little bit of suspension. So the gear stays straight and it actually works out really well. That's just one super stiff little um, tension spring up here. And this is all reinforced, that's carbon toe. Um, there's carbon everywhere on this thing and it's just spray painted. So yeah, those are the gear. As you can see, it has these big flat surfaces here for mounting in the fuselage. If you go over the fuselage here, there's big flat spots of foam there and there. And I have embedded into the foam uh, half inch by half inch basswood little plugs that are just gorilla glued into the foam. Um, there's four on the bottom, four on the top. They align with the four bolts there. One, two, three, four, and four bolt holes on the top of the gear. So all of this can be taken apart, removed some from the fuselage, serviced, parts can be replaced at any time, whenever you want. To operate these little doors on the side, there's no servos and they're just, they're just spring loaded. And everything's just cut out of the fiberglass. Then I added this little fiberglass lip here to hold it flush when it was in the mold. Did the same for the edges down here on these doors so it holds it flush but to operate these little doors there's just a spring that holds them shut they have the same ca hinge down here but if you see there's this little wooden or well let's be honest it's a popsicle stick um just little ramp and as this gear 
when it's stowed in the up position, but then when it retracts, these come down and they spread out. And that's actually what hits those little, those little wooden ramps and pushes those doors out. That way, when the gear are in the down position, the little doors stick out just a little bit like that. Now these gear doors, the nose gear doors, have single stage doors, two stage doors. Now the Freewing Blue Box takes care of that sequencing, but the main gear doors are just single stage. Um, and the retracts I'm using on the main gear, they're significantly beefier. It's, they actually operate in reverse to the nose gear, which is kind of annoying. So when you select up on the nose gear, these ones go down. So that's an easy fix, just a servo signal reverser in between this and the gear sequencer. But for timing purposes, I have to have a second sequencer on these doors, and then that sequencer plugs into the um, just one of the retract ports on that sequencer in order to get the timing right. Not a big deal, but I mean, a little annoying. All good. And those two servos for the that drive the main doors are free wing 17 gram metal gear because i needed some beefy servos for those big doors All right, i think that gives you a pretty good idea of how i went through and constructed the fuselage of this airplane it's all fiberglass there's a couple fiberglass imperfections those will get cut out um filled over sanded in the finishing process i think that's it for this section next i will pull off the wings show you how i did those um, I'll show you where I am at in the stage of this build. So I'll see you then.